aware, you must have been aware that um, there have been cries, so much of cries, expression of pain and agony, uh, deprivation, and all of it in the oil producing communities in this country, particularly in the Niger Delta. And uh, every attempt has been made to see what could be done. But I will tell you that by the grace of God, in the Ninth Assembly, under uh, His Excellency Femi Bajabi Amila, the current Chief of Staff to the President while he was Speaker, the leadership of the House under him, you know, thought that there should be a way of addressing the problems of the people of the Niger Delta, you know, through, you know, a legislative approach. And that gave birth to the Committee on Host Communities, which I think came at a time that it was very, very necessary. You know, because most attempts have been from the executive point of view. But this time around, I think uh, it was the best thing that happened to enable the people also have a way of interacting. Now, if you see like this committee, petitions from host communities, the things they see that don't sit well with them, they are at liberty to you know, send petitions to the committee. And the committees would, you know, take steps, legislative steps, you know, to try to address them. And with that interface, <clears throat> that level of interaction, it helps a lot to also cushion the effects, you know, of the agonies and pains they go through. Uh, because for most people who are not aware, or those who have not had the opportunity of traveling to the oil producing areas, you will discover that the issues, when, they, when people talk about uh, the activities of these oil companies, um, like oil spills and the way people are being treated and all of that, uh, you may just hear it and you just, you, you wave it off with one hand. But if you get in there, see the, de the dehumanizing situation our people live, then you would understand why the National Assembly, Senate and House of Reps have the committee on host communities. It is principally to protect the rights of those who live in these host communities. production and the activities of last year. So we want to be also sure that what we paid this year is the actual of what the costs were last year. Our duty is to make sure that the implementation and utilization of these funds are done according to the law. So you will agree with me that we have quite a lot to do and part of that we've been doing. You also have a very huge problem of the Niger Delta people, which has to do with the penalties from the gas flare. Gas has been flared for as long as oil production activities have been in this country. But to a great extent, the communities where this gas is flared, they suffer very huge environmental challenges and nobody cares and so the laws would provide that a small cost be paid by the companies that are unable to convert their gas to other uses so from the from inception we haven't seen them until lately when we started following up these issues of this penalties. In fact, the House mandated this committee 
and other committees to make sure that 27.6 billion naira, which was approved by the former president as part of the monies being owed before the PIA be paid to these oil bearing communities where gas is flared. Up until this time, they have not been paid to them. So we're on it. So you discover that everything that has to do with their rights, we have to restore those rights back to them. is one thing that would also help develop the place. You know, how do you feel? Maybe you have Shell, or maybe you have, uh, let's say, LNG before now, the headquarters in Lagos. They have no business putting the headquarters in Lagos. They should be in the Niger Delta there. You know, because that's where the heat is. And so like you saw, LNG has done, taken the move by taking the headquarters to the Niger Delta, I think it's a very welcome development. And if other uh, companies and organizations that have you know, a relationship with the oil sector do so, there will be less of acrimony because it means that even because you, you're, you're located in the Niger Delta, then there will be opportunities that come around the catchment area which means that there will be more opportunities for the people to work. And I salute their courage very well because when you have lost your, your means of livelihood, our people are predominantly fishermen and farmers, hunters and all of that. And when growing up, some of us, you could just you know, come back from school and you just get to your backyard. And before you know, you have enough fish in less than no time. You have enough fish with which, you know, to hurry a meal. But today, you don't find anything like that. So when you don't find anything like that, all of that is gone. How many people have the facilities to go deep into the ocean to fish? You don't find them. So in your community, you have water. You cannot drink water. You don't have light, you don't have schools, you don't have anything. So what happens to you? So what we are talking about is let the people continue to be patient. They have been very patient people. I'm sure they are all aware. And we're going to go on a lot of enlightenment, you know, to bring our people to speed with the provisions of the, of the uh, Petroleum Industry Act, which gives hope. For them and many of them should be prepared you know to take advantage of what is coming to enable them acquire skills and also improve on their education because those are the things that will help us to grow the more and so i thank our youths and i also call on them to get themselves ready for the the revolution that is going to come as a result, when I mean revolution, a positive revolution that is going to come as a result of the implementation of the PIA, because it's going to provide for some of them to go to school, provide for some of them to learn skills, and also provide uh, basic amenities. And also encourage the companies that operate in these areas. It is not only the 3% that really matters. They can do better. The issues of scholarship, uh, provision of uh, uh, employment for them and all of that. You don't operate in my backyard. And then all those who work with you are not from my place. Those are the things that cost the, uh, the restiveness. So you must take a percentage from those communities and the neighboring communities so that there's a balance. And then everybody will now begin to look at it as we are part owners of you know, the establishment that is in my community.